We are now in part 30. Beowulf narrates his adventure to Hijlak. It may well discomfort the prince of the Heathobards, Heathobards and each of the thane men of earls that attend him when he goes to the building escorting the woman that a noble-born daneman the knights should be feasting. There gleam on his person the leavings of elders, hard and ring bright, Heathrobards treasure while they wielded their arms, till they missed, miss, missled to the battle, their own dear lives and beloved companions. He saith at the banquet who the caller beholdeth, an ancient ash warrior who earlman's destructure clearly recalledeth, cruel his spirit. Sadly beginneth sounding the useful, vain champion's spirit, though the thoughts of his bosom. War grief to waken, and this world answer speaketh. Art thou able, my friend, to know, when thou seest it, the brand which thy father bare to conflict in his latest adventure, neath the visor of helmet, the dearly loved iron, where the Daneman did slay him, and brave looted scaldings on the fall of the heroes, when vengeance was sleeping, the slaughter place wielded. E'en now some of man of the murderer's progeny, exulting in ornaments, enters the building, boasts of his blood shedding, off beareth the jewel which thou shouldest wholly hold in possession. So he urgeth and mindeth on every occasion with woe bringing words till waxeth the season, when the woman's thane from the works of his father, the bill having bitten, blood glory seepeth, fated to perish, the other one thenceward scapeth alive. The land knoweth thoroughly. Then the oaths of the earlmen on each side are broken, when the rancors unresting are raging in Ingeld, and his wife love waxeth less warm after sorrow. So the Heathobards favor not faith, I reckon, their part in the treaty not true to the Danemen, their friendship not vast. I further shall tell thee more about Grendel than thou fullest mayest hear ornament giver what afterward came from the hand rush of heroes when heaven's bright jewel or earth builds had gilded the stranger came raging the horrible night fiend us for to visit where wholly unharmed the hall we were guarding to Hosindo happened a hopeless contention death to the doomed one dead he fell foremost girded war champion to him grendel became then to the vassal distinguished a tooth-weaponed murderer, the well-beloved henchman's body all swallowed, not the earlier off empty did hand him, did hand did the bloody tooth murderer, mindful of evils, wish to escape to the gold giver's palace, but sturdy of strength, he strove to outdo me, hand ready grappled. A glove was suspended, spacious and wondrous, in art fetters fastened, which was fashioned entirely by touch of the craftsman. From the dragon's skin by the devil's devices, he down in its depth would do me unsadly, one among many, deed doer raging. Though sinless he saw me, not so could it happen, when I in my anger upright did stand. Tis too long to recount how requital I furnished for every evil to the earlman's destroyer. Twas there, my prince, that I proudly distinguished thy land with my, with my labors. He left and retreated. He lived his life a little while longer, yet his right hand guarded his footstep in Herot. And sad mooded thence to the sea bottom fell he, mournful in mind, for the might rush of battle, the friend of the skildings, with gold that was plated, with ornaments many, much requited me. So he's getting a telling about how um, King Rothgar lavished gifts among him for killing him. When daylight had dawned, and down to the banquet we had sat us together, there was chanting and joyance. The age-stricken scalding asked many questions, and of old times related, oft light ringing harp strings, joy-telling wood, were touched by the brave one. Now he uttered measures, mournful and truthful. Then the large-hearted land king, a legend of wonder, truthfully told us. Now, troubled with years, the age or a warrior afterward began to mourn for the might that marked him in his youth days. His breath breast within boiled, when burdened with winters much he remembered. From morning till night then we joyed us therein, as etiquette suffered, till the second night season came unto earth folk. Then, early thereafter, the mother of Grendel was ready for vengeance. Wretched she journeyed. Her son had death ravished, the wrath of the gateman. 
the horrible woman avenged her offspring and with mighty main strength murdered a hero. The spirit of Aesir, aged advisor, was ready to vanish, nor when Morn had listened. Were they any wise suffered to consume him with fire, folk of the Daneman, the death-weakened hero, nor the beloved liegeman lay on the pyre. She the corpse had oft carried into the clutch of the foemen. Neath the mountain brook's fold, to Hrothgar was saddest. Of pains that ever preyed on the chieftain, but the life of the by the life of thee, the land prince then me besought very sadly in sea currents eddies to display my prowess, to peril my safety, might deeds accomplish. When he, when did he promise? I found then the famous flood's current, cruel, horrible depth warder. A while unto us, two hand was in common. The currents were seething with gore that was clotted, and Grendel's fierce mother's head I oft hacked at the hall of the bottom with huge reaching sword edge. Hardly I rested, my life from her clutches. Not doomed was I then, but the warden of the earlmen afterward gave me jewels in quantity, kinsmen of Heathdane. Now we are on part 31, gift giving is mutual. So the beloved land prince lived in decorum. I had missed no rewards, no meeds of my prowess, but he gave me jewels regarding my wishes, Heathdan and his baron. I'll bring them to thee, then, eighthling of earlmen, offer them gladly, and still unto thee is all my affection. But few of my folk can I find surviving, but thee, dear Heglaf, bade him he and then to carry the boar image, banner, battle high helmet, iron gray armor, and the excellent weapon in song measures said. This suit for the battle Hrothgar presented me, bade me expressly, wise mooded eighthling, thereafter to tell thee the whole story of its history, said King Hrar. Hirgar owned it, Dane prince for long, yet he wished not to give then the mail to his son, though he dearly loved him. Hereward the, her the hardy, hold all in joyance. I heard that there followed hard on the jewels, two braces of stallions of striking resemblance, dappled and yellow. He granted him uses of horses and treasures, so a kinsman should bear him, no web of treachery weave for another, nor by cunning craftiness cause the destruction of crusty companion, most precious to Hijlak, the bold one in battle, the baron of his sister, and each unto others mindful favors. I am told that he, he proffered the necklace, wonder gem rare that Weathlau gave him, the troop leader's daughter of a trio of horses, slander and saddle bright, soon did the jewel embellish her bosom, where the beer feast was over, so Ekro, Ekthos Baron, brave, did prove him, war famous man, by deeds that were valiant, he lived in honor, beloved companions, slew not carousing, his mood was not cruel, but by hand strength hugest of heroes then living, the brave one retained the bountiful gift that the Lord had allowed him. Long he was wretched, so that the sons of the Geatmen accounted him worthless, and the Lord of the liegemen loth was to do him. Mickle of honor, when the mead cups were passing, they fully believed him idle and sluggish, an indolent eighthling, to the honor blessed man there. Came requital for the cuts he had suffered, the folk troops defender bade fetch to the building, the heirloom of Herethel, embellished with gold, so the brave one enjoyed it. There was jewel no richer in the form of a weapon among the geats of that era. In Beowulf's keeping he placed it and gave him seven of thousands, manor and lordship. Common to both was the land among the people, estate and inherited rights and possessions. To the second one spa spe specially spacious dominions. To the one who was better. It afterward happened in days that followed, befell the battle thanes after Heglak's death, and when Hendred was murdered with weapons of warfare neath the well covered targets. When valiant battlemen in Victor Brand sought him, war scyphing heroes harassed the nephew of Herrick in battle. To Beowulf's keeping, tuned there in extensive dominions, he fittingly ruled them a fifty of winters. He, a man ruler wise, manor ward old till a certain one gan, on glooming darkening nights, a dragon to govern, who guarded a treasure, a high rising stone cliff on heath that was grayish. A path neath it lay, unknown unto mortals. Someone of earthmen entered the mountain, the heathenish horde laid hold of with ardor. 
So after Heardred's Heardred's death, Beowulf became king, or becomes king, and he rules the Geats for 50 years. And now we'll see what happens next, because we left off with a dragon and some hordes. <laughs>